record. Um, so I've got a bit of a disclaimer at the start of this uh, uh, demo, uh, very embarrassingly, our cookie do online recipe platform went down about half an hour ago. I don't know if Gail, uh, Jill, not Jill, um, Diane and uh, Leanne have picked that up at all. Not, have you tried to cook anything on? No, okay, I've not, not used my cookie do. Right. So cookie do is down, which is a bit of a problem when I'm trying to directly access recipes on the TM6 screen. So I thought, oh, brilliant. I'll just get my laptop up and then I'll follow the instructions on the laptop. Can't access it through the laptop mm -hmm. either. But I have my trusty do TM5 down. here and my TM5, which I'd come to think I was going to sell, actually, and just replace it with the TM6. The TM5, because I happened to sync it this morning with the cookie on the side just before Cookie D went down, I've got all my recipes on the five. So we are going to cook with the TM5, which is, for the purposes of what you're going to see, you're going to see pretty much everything that I wanted to show you anyway. What it might mean is that I can't do one of the dishes um, because obviously I need the instructions on the screen or to be able to see the instructions and I won't be able to read them off the five and operate the six at the same time if it's cooking something else. Um, but it will give you a good idea of, of what it's all about. Oh, look, I've got a little one in the background. Um, and um, yeah, you'll certainly uh, see it doing some cooking. So I'm really sorry about that. I'm hoping that I'm going to talk for about 10 minutes just to sort of introduce myself. Um, and introduce the kind of the Thermomix philosophy. And um, fingers crossed, I'm hoping that our technical team will be working away and the, the sixes will come up ready for me to use at the end of the introduction. But so let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, so let me just, just check my way What's see what got? No, that's, well, haven't I got anyone else you. in the waiting check room. Check out for the, for the postman when you're, no, um, when you're out and about. Just... I'm sure he'll come like usual. Right, so I've just muted you all, so there's no background noise. If you want to ask some questions, please feel free. Um, obviously, unmute yourselves and ask questions as we're going along. Um, you know, that's the benefit of, of doing these demos so that I can answer all your questions um, that you have. Also, you can use the chat if you want to um, pop anything in there. And Diane or Gail, if you could keep an eye on the chat for me, that would be great and just flag it to my attention. So hello, everybody. Um, I, I feel like I know a lot of you already, even though I've never met you, obviously, because we have connections on Facebook, which is, you know, part of the joy of uh, this whole new online way of working. But for those that don't know me, uh, my name is, oh, the dog's going, my name is Lindsay. Jamie, can you let the dog out? Um, I'm a trained chef, so that's my background. I said no to Thermomix for about five years, and I've come to realise it was kind of the biggest mistake of my life, actually. <laughs> Um, I was one of these people that said, no, it's far too expensive. Don't need one of those. I can cook from scratch. I enjoy cooking. Um, I've got lots of gadgets already, so it'd just be a waste of money. And it kind of pretty much stayed there for about five years. Then one evening, I happened to go to a friend's house who was having a demo, and she'd got a Thermomix. And she said, look, I think you'd really like it. Please come and have a look at it. So I did. Um, and really the rest is history. I bought my first machine, which was the five. Oh, hang on, have I got, am I connected now? Um, about three months after that, it still took me three months of a bit more persuasion from the advisor at the time. Then I bought my five um, and I played about with it for a few months and people kept saying to me, oh, this looks amazing because I'm quite engaged and active on Facebook. Where do I get one from? Um, I'm really interested in what it can do for me and my family. So I decided to join myself as an advisor about six months after that. And that was a couple of years ago. Um, and now I've become a team leader. And I have just, as you, a lot of you will know, made my 70th sale this year. So I am now a diamond advisor, which I'm absolutely delighted at. Who would have thought that this, with, with everything this year has brought, uh, that people would still be buying Thermomixes? Right. But how wrong could we be? Because actually, uh, it's not, I, I am by no means an exception in this. We've had the most diamond advisors ever in the UK already this year. Um, and I think people are buying Thermomixes because our hard work and everything that we put into showing people why it is so much uh, better to have a Thermomix in your kitchen and such good value for money is really getting across. And of course, people have had the time to play with it. And again, when lockdown happens at the beginning of November, I was thinking, oh my goodness, you know, who's going to buy a Thermomix now? 
But that weekend, I had calls from about five people saying to me, it's, they just thought it was the time for them to buy one because they were going to be at home. They couldn't face the thought of cooking. They'd understood that it's an investment, but an investment that pays off financially. And they decided to buy. So um, that's fantastic. Um, and I hope uh, some of you will uh, make that decision as well after seeing this demo. OK, so now I'm going to just bring you forward to show you my screen. So let's have a look on here i'm just going to see oh i am connected to cookie do oh brilliant it's come back up again i thought if i chatted away for 10 minutes it might give me that extra time so this is what thermomix looks like okay we've got three dials so all our recipes are laid out with these three settings so they're a function of time temperature and speed and um, so we're not going to worry about that too much to start with because the majority of the cooking you will do comes through uh, our guided recipe platform and all the settings are preset and already in the machine ready for you just to click start. So these are the functions that it has. So you can use it as a set of weighing scales. This is one of my favorite features. It will make you bread and you'll see the bread. It's, it has a super fast kneading action. It's absolutely fantastic. Turbo is a bit like a pulse on a food processor. So very quick blast of the blade enabling you to chop coffee beans. Um, what else can you do with turbo? Uh, grind um, icing sugar from sugar. Uh, chop nuts with um, all sorts of things. So pre-clean. So now we've got a new and improved pre-clean. So it will automatically detect, or you have to tell it what you've been doing, but it automatically detects the uh, cycle time, depending on how dirty it, the bowl is. And you've got four different settings. If you've been making dough, universal, fat or working with fat or caramel, it's not gonna like that because my lid's not on. Um, and then if you've got a browned base as well. So. Um, so that's a really handy uh, little feature. We all love our pre-cleaners owners. You can blend with it. You can boil eggs with it. And with the egg boiler, you can determine how you want your yolk, whether you want it soft, really soft, soft, runny, medium, firm, firm, hard boiled. Um, so it just leaves nothing. No, there's no margin for error. And that's what these thermomixes are all about. If you follow the recipes to the letter, you are guaranteed a restaurant quality result. You can use it as a kettle. Um, you can warm up food in it. It can, it, it, with thickened sauces. So this is where, as owners, we've all used this. It's amazing to make something like a white sauce or bechamel or a cheese sauce. All I have to do is just put all my ingredients in. So that's what the inside of my bowl looks like. Um, uh, I weigh in my ingredients following the guided recipe and then I click start and the thicker mode comes on and it makes me a perfect bechamel uh, sauce within about 10 minutes and it stirs it so it's completely lump free and you don't have to do anything else with it. Um, you've got the rice cooker and then on here we've got the yogurt mode so fermentation you can slow cook and you can sous vide and there's a huge bit blank space here so I wonder what they're going to be bringing out next and again a, a question that I often get asked with these machines is are they going to bring out a new model you know I don't want to buy one and find out there's a new model um, a few months down the line and actually what we've said with these sixes is we can deliver new functionality through software updates so a lot of these new functions we've had since the six was released last year so the thicker mode is new the rice cooker came on board the egg boiler uh, only a couple of months ago um and uh, yet yeah, we've got a specific mode now for sous vide as well so we are really trying to future proof these machines and uh, you're able to sort of have an up-to-date machine through a software update rather than having to buy a new machine itself so there are those and then if i go back to my screen what I can do here, so this is called our uh, Cookie Do app. So this app um, is available on a phone or an iPhone, or you can look at it through the website. And this is how you will plan out what food you're going to cook. So the app has got about 60,000 recipes on it. I often say if it's not on Cookie Do, it's not worth doing. You will find everything imaginable from all sorts of different cuisines all around the world. So on the app, you can do your weekly planner. So you can do a daily plan, a weekly plan, a monthly plan, a yearly planner if you want. Um, so you can plan everything out in advance. Again, another feature which allows the, uh, my customers to save themselves lots of money because you only buy what you need. 
Um, through the app, then you can order all the ingredients um, that you need for that particular week. And now you can sync that list of ingredients with your online food shopping provider and get it ordered for delivery direct to your door. So really, Cookie Do or Thermomix will enable you to plan your food, it will enable you to shop for your food, um, and it cooks your food. And all you have to do really is put your shopping away, get it out, um, peel a carrot, peel an onion, and just add it in at uh, the time that, that Thermomix tells you, and then it gets on with cooking for you. So it really is like having an extra pair of hands in the kitchen. Uh, Carolina's just coming in. So I'll just uh, wait a couple of seconds for Caroline, although Caroline is the Thermomix owner. Um, so hopefully she can, she's joining. Hi, Carolina, morning. Can I just ask a quick question, Lindsay? Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so how, how does it cook it? Is it by, this might be a silly question, but is it purely electrical or does it like? Yes, yep. so you'll see I'm plugged in at the back. Um, and uh, yeah, so this means when I travel in my motorhome, we, we often spend a lot of time in France uh, when we're not on lockdown. Um, I won't go away now as lots of owners say the same without my Thermomix because, and it's ideal for if you've got a small kitchen, you know, cramped environment like we have in a motorhome, um, or you don't want to take too much extra weight, you haven't got lots of appliances already um, and haven't got the space for them. You know, the Thermomix, it, will, it performs about 25 functions in one. So it's absolutely brilliant for space saving. And yes, you just need an electric plug. Okay, so what, this what is what I mean, I've got. Sorry, what I, mean, what I mean by that is like, it's not got any sort of radiation, like a microwave or anything like that. No, no. no. Okay. No, it doesn't work in the same way as a microwave. It, it is just like having an electric hob, basically. Okay. Um, so this is what I've got scheduled for today. We're going to cook some of this um, this morning and some, some of this I'll do later. Um, so let me just have a quick look here on what I wanted to show you. I'm going to go back. So through the um, screen as well, I have got access to, and this is all controlled through the app. So this is what your app will look like. Um, when you're on Cookie Do, I can uh, create my own collections of recipes so I can create folders and save them all, which is really handy. So you'll see in my chicken folder, I've just um, picked up all the chicken recipes that sound really interesting. Some's in, fr in French and then some are in English. Um, and, and they are there ready and waiting for me on my machine when I want to cook them. All I've got to do, this is a really nice recipe actually, this chicken chasseur is I click on it and then I press start cooking and then it takes me straight into the recipe. Okay, so that's what, so I get these instructions on the screen, which we'll have a look through um, in a minute. So not only have you got your um, saved collections, uh, creative collections rather, you've got these saved collections. So these are cookery books that Thermomix put together and you can save entire books onto your machine. And you know, there is a book for everything imaginable. So here, this is a really nice one in the run up to Christmas, the Thermomix book, the Thermomix Christmas book. So there's about 60 recipes. There's some absolutely gorgeous things on here um, that are designed to just help you out, you know, in the run up to Christmas. I did that Christmas pudding on a live this week, it was phenomenal. I made it in less than 10 minutes. And then the Thermomix cooked it for me in the afternoon. It just steamed it away on the steaming unit at the top. Um, so uh, it was absolutely no effort at all um, and a fantastic result. This is fab, this Christmas tree pull apart bread. Um, ever so easy to do, looks really impressive. You'd never believe how easy it is to do. And things like cheese straws as well. Um, pastry, cheese, bread, all that sort of thing in the Thermomix is ever so easy, really quick um, and um, with brilliant results. Okay. Lindsay? Yes. Good morning. Hi, I, I'm Good morning. Carolina. Uh, sorry Hi, for Carolina. jumping in. <laughs> you know, do you get the same recipes on your phone yes. when you got the app? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, what you can see on the screen is exactly what you will have through the app, Carolina. Okay. So, um, so then you can make like lists, like shopping lists on your phone. That's yeah? right. So you would do the shopping lists through the app on your phone. Absolutely. No, you wouldn't do it. So on the screen, yeah. I can search so that these new machines now are connected directly to the internet, to Cookie Do um, when it's working correctly. My old machine 
you had to sink through a cook key. So it was a slightly sort of more com complicated process. You had that extra step of having to sink your app through the cook key. We don't have to do that anymore. So if I want to search for a recipe, I can search just directly on the screen. So here you can see search cookie do. So if I wanted to search something here, I would just put in chicken, for example, and search. And it's gonna bring me up all of these recipes, 300 results. So that's just in the UK. Then, and this is what something you may not have been shown, Carolina, you want to take off the UK filter and then you can add on any filters that might be relevant to you. So obviously English, if you're an English speaker. Uh, what, um, which country are you from, Carolina? Are you Polish? Oh, is she? Are you on mute? No, I'm here. Sorry, I couldn't find yeah. the button. Yeah, yeah, I'm from Poland. I'm from, from Poland. Poland. So, yeah. so you, you know, you can then filter on all these different languages. So we can okay. put the Polish filter on as well. So English and Polish. Let's put that filter on. Oh, it's not liking it this morning. Why won't it let me do that? There it goes. And then if I just click on that, I get 1,087 results now. So it just widens that search. So I always recommend for people to filter on English and not just uh, have the UK recipes displayed. Right, so that's cookie do. Um, but yes, Thanks. you would do all your app, uh, you would do all your ingredient ordering, your planning through the app on your phone. Because it, you know it's much easier to sit down with a cup of tea and do it. Um, uh, rather than have to sort of stand on this on this touch screen here and do it this is just for looking up recipes really quickly um but yeah you certainly just uh, do that on your phone Indeed. i'm assuming carolina because i know you had a 31 before did you not have cookie do okay, no no you know so i i had the the 31 the tm31 for eight yeah. years and you know, I, I'm sorry for jumping here, but I, I just bought it from my mother-in-law, actually, who is in Poland, and she became a rep, um, and mine is coming today, but I just wanted to encourage the girls here who don't have it, like Pam and Jill, don't think twice, because <laughs> this is going to be like so much, your kitchen is just going to be transformed, honestly. Like, I love Aww. Tropic as much as I love Thermomix, and if I had more time, I would probably become a rep as well. Don't think <laughs> girls just get it from Lindsay. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, that's really kind. Thank you so much, Carolina. Lindsay, <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah, hello. Hey, I was just going to ask. So, what happens if you're in the middle of making something and the cookie dough goes down? Can you still carry on cooking, or mm. is that a bit of a as long as the recipe is actively on your screen? Then yes, it okay. will save in the memory. Right. Um, it, I have to say, it's very unusual for cookie dough to go down. When it does go down, strangely enough, it seems to happen on a Saturday morning at about this time. Whether or not that is over, user overload, I don't know, but it's, it's always resolved within about half an hour. So I wasn't overly worried when I realised at half past nine this morning it had gone down because I did have a suspicion that by half ten we'd be up again. Um, but um, yeah, as long as that recipe is on the screen, and you've actually begun that cooking process, it will be in the memory. I could have accessed actually all of my recently cooked recipes on there this morning, but I hadn't just, I hadn't actually got round to loading them. I was just gonna go straight off the screen. So don't worry about that. Right, let's get going with some bread, first of all. So I'm just going to, I'll show you what my screen looks like in a minute when I start cooking the main meals. But I'd like to do a little bit of bread because this is so fast and it really does sum up that whole sort of Thermomix philosophy um, as to making cooking really accessible, really easy and, and really quick for everybody. So I've got my screen. I'm not going to show you this screen to start with because I'll show you what my screen looks like on the six with the main meal recipes that we're doing. Um, so I've got an instruction here. It's asking me to put in 220 grams of water. So I just want to warm my water up a little bit. Um, now I'm going to halve this recipe actually because my children don't seem to like the sun-dried tomato rolls. Let's just turn my tripod around. So I end up giving them away to my neighbours. So I'm going to halve the recipe, but I'm going to weigh straight in. So I've got inbuilt scales here. It goes straight in. I've gone a little bit over. I knew that would happen. Okay, that'll do, 125. 
I'm okay, I'm okay with that. Um, a little bit of sugar next. So I've just clicked on next. So when you've completed a step, you click next um, and it tells you what to do next. So one teaspoon of sugar. Now two teaspoons of yeast. So I'm obviously just halving that. So I'm gonna put in a good teaspoon like that. Now what it wants to do next, and I'm gonna ignore it just to speed things up, is it will mix all of those ingredients together and it will heat it up to 40 degrees, which is the ideal temperature for fermenting bread. But I'm gonna ignore that and I'm just gonna continue with adding my flour just for speed. So I'm gonna put in about 250 grams of flour, go straight in. And then my sun-dried tomatoes. So if I click on next, it'll ask me to put in 90 grams of sun-dried tomatoes. Obviously I'm gonna put in the 45. Have you done this one yet, Diane? Well, Gail, it's a brilliant recipe. Um, so that goes in. And then I'm gonna put in some olive oil. So this is just some oil from a previous um, sun-dried tomato jar. I usually keep the oil because it can be used in cooking. It's all about trying to sort of reduce the waste. And then some salt. So it's a bit like, and one of my customers said um, this to me at the beginning of the year, having a chef in an earpiece telling you what to do. So if you're not a confident cook in the kitchen, having a Thermomix would be really beneficial for you. Um, because it is, the, it, it, it is guaranteed restaurant quality food as long as you follow those instructions. Okay, so now I'm gonna click on next and it's going to tell me to put the lid on. So insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid and the dough function comes on. It's already preset for two minutes. So all I need to do is just turn that speed selector to start and it's gonna knead away from me. So that knead away from me. So at that point I can just walk off and leave it to do something else. Right, so now I'm gonna come onto my other machine and I will show you what my screen looks like. Dan's got hers all fired up in the background. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. I can't hear you, Are you you're muted. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yep. Right, I've just asked a question about the sun-dried tomatoes. Can you make them in the machine or do you have to buy shop-bought? What, sun-dried tomatoes? Um, well, to make it a sun-dried tomato, you can dry your own tomatoes, but you'd have to, they have to be dried. So you would, so in order to do that, you'd either dehydrate them or you put them in a low oven or you just put them outside on trays in the, in the summer, like the um, Italian and, and Greeks do when you've got beautiful sunshine. So no, it's not something that would be could be done in a thermomix. Yeah, I would always buy them. But if That's I was right. going to make them, I would have to. You'd have to dehydrate them in an oven with some salt over the top. I, okay. So I just buy them. Yep. Right. So now I'm going to get on with my chicken curry. So you're going to see how easy and quick it is to pull together a really nice curry sauce. Now I'm not gonna follow this recipe entirely because it calls for peanuts and one of my children has a peanut allergy so we don't use peanuts, but that is a really good example of where you can make other swaps. So you don't have to follow um, the recipes entirely. I often get asked, well, you know, can I half the recipe? Can I double the recipe? And the answer is you absolutely can, but it may just affect the cooking time. So it's a little bit of a trial and error approach because obviously all our recipes are calculated on following those steps entirely. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute the peanut butter at the end for some ground almonds, um, just to thicken it up. So it's, you start off by making a little sort of uh, mint and um, cucumber salsa, which I'm also not going to bother with. I just want to get straight in to making the curry. Okay, so the two minutes are gone. And look, I've already got my bread dough. Here it is, absolutely perfect. So it's kicked out the flour a little bit around the top of the bowl, which I'd expect to see because um, I've halved the recipe. 
generally when you work with about 500 grams of flour, it, it will pick it all up for you. But I would just go around with a dough scraper like that and just scrape it out. So I'm just gonna leave that for the moment because I just want to get on with the chicken curry. And while it's grinding the spices for me, I, am, I will be showing you how to shape the rolls. And I am just gonna put my oven on, on low just to force proof them. So these rolls are brilliant because you can get beautiful uh, dinner rolls out or lunch rolls out in about an hour uh, from start to finish. So, you know, that is super fast really. Okay, so I've already weighed out my um, uh, curry uh, ingredients or measured out my all my spices so I don't have to go through all those, but I will talk you through it step by step. So it's asking me to, and this is why I'm going to show you my screen as I do this. So I'm just going to dump all... Do you put in how yep. many people the, main, the menu is for? Like when you're going to make that chicken curry, do you put how many people... No, so they're all based, so all our recipes are usually based on four, sometimes okay. six portions. Okay. okay, so if you were going to adjust it, you just have to mentally calculate. Um, what I have, a lot of people do is just make the full portions up anyway and then freeze them. Um, because you may, you know, you may as well. So in goes, if I just show you, in goes all my spices and I'm just going to talk you through that process. Oh, that's handy. My turmeric stuck to the bottom. My bowl was obviously um, <laughs> slightly wet this morning. Okay, so let's show you the screen. So I put in the two teaspoons of turmeric, then a little bit of cayenne pepper. Now again, I don't want to make this too spicy, so I just reduced that slightly. Some salt, there's the cinnamon stick, and a whole stick of cinnamon. You'll notice because this will grind it for you. Ten to fifteen cardamom pods. Cloves, peppercorns, chilies, coriander, cumin, curry leaves. Now it's telling me to put that lid on. So it's going to make a big, no, actually, no, I think it's going to toast them first of all. Right, I need to find my lid. Here we go. So put the lid on and then it will say insert the measuring cup. Now, this actually is a measuring cup. Again, these machines were designed to replace as many bits of kitchen equipment as possible. Um, so you'll find that all of the accessories can have, have other functions as well. So the little insert to the main lid also doubles as a measuring cup. Our simmering basket, so this is the simmering basket here, which you're, uh, yeah, we've all seen that in the recipe actually today. So this sits inside like that. Um, you can steam vegetables and rice in it. But you'll also notice it's got a vent on here so you can use it as a when you're filtering lemonade for example if you make lemonade and again that's usually something i do on demos you can filter uh, the the fresh lemonade out through those vents you can also use that as a sieve in its own right um, you can use the varoma which is the big dish that i'm going to cook the salmon in here you see the varoma you can use that as a colander um, and the lid for the varoma um, also functions as a tray underneath to catch all the drips. So now it's told me, I'll just go back to that, insert the measuring cup into the mixing bowl lid, and now it's gonna get on with toasting those spices for me. So this is where we, we're seeing the heat applied for the first time in this demo. So my guided instructions are for six minutes of time, 120 degrees, and at speed one. So that is the benefit of this machine. It will keep it at that constant temperature for you and stir it at the same time. So you don't have to be uh, locked onto a saucepan or a frying pan, toasting your spices, carefully controlling the temperature, turning it up or down as required. You're just free at that point to go off and do something else. So let's just put you back in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I shape these rolls. So I'm just going to move my tripod around. You can see behind the scenes here, all the mess on top of my <laughs> kitchen island. It's not too bad this morning. Okay, right, and I'm going to angle you down. So this is where it's going to, my, it is just going to go straight down to the bottom. So can you see that okay? Right, let's get the dough out. So even if you've never made bread before, people that have struggled to make bread can make bread in a thermomix. It is absolutely fault proof. Um, and the dough always comes out beautifully as well. 
just get my day scraper because that can be really handy. Although the spatula as well that we give you uh, when you buy a Thermomix, all these accessories are included. There's nothing extra to buy. This is really good for portioning out day, but I'm a bit of a purist. I, as a trained chef, I was taught in a certain way uh, and I tend to rely on the tools that I've, I've always used. So let me get my day scraper out. Okay, so here's my day. Looks lovely. Just give it a quick knead with my hands. And now all I want to do is just to um, break it into about, it's gonna do about five rolls. So if I was to do the whole amount, oh look, here comes Tracy. Ah, has she gone? Um, Tracy. There we go. So if I was gonna do the whole amount, um, I would get 10 rolls out, but I carved the recipe. And I, so what I'm looking for is portions of about, I haven't done this very well at all, um, normally reasonably good at uh, judging the size, portions of about 85 grams. Now you don't have to weigh them out, but I'm a chef, I like to control every element of my cooking. Um, and the benefit of weighing all your portions out is that they rise at exactly the same time, they cook at exactly the same time. So that's just gone slightly over. So I'm gonna take a little bit out. Perfect, 85. Oh, 83. Right, that one looks slightly big to me. 90. 88. That's about right, that one. 89. 75, so I need to take a little off. There we go. So I've got my portions. And all I, I then need to do, I, I sometimes I like to just come off round the clock like this and form a roll. So I'm just pulling out and tucking into the center, which starts to form your roll. Um, lots of bakers won't bother with this actually, they just go straight on to rolling. I think it just creates a nice tight roll. There we are, last one. And then using two hands, I'm going to just use the claw technique, which shapes them. And you'll, if you watch uh, Bake Off, you'll have seen this. So Paul Hollywood always said, his father said to him, you've got two hands. If you don't use both of them, I'll only pay you half the wage. <laughs> so you can do it two at a time. My, this is slipping out, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do actually. It's because it's slipping underneath me. It's making it harder. I'm just gonna pop that underneath. So it'll stop it slipping and then I can do them properly. Right. It's just going around in circular motion. And again, last one. So these are my nice, nice rolls, ready shapes. And all I do then is pop them on a baking sheet. Okay, I'm gonna cover them with a bit of greased cling film. I didn't get that out this morning. Usually I have a little bit to hand. Where is it? Here it is. Yeah, so I just use this repeatedly actually. So it, so it just had a, a little bit of olive oil sprayed on it. Pop the grease cling film over. And now I'm just gonna put them into a low oven at 50 degrees. I turn the fan off to rise um, for about 45 minutes to an hour. Oh, that's a little bit hot. So let's just keep the door open. I got a bit carried away when I was setting up my oven earlier. So that is my bread rolls on the go. Let's bring you back round. And angle you up like that. Right, can you see me again? Or can you see the thermomixes again? So that's your rolls done. Ever so easy. And straight in the oven to prove. So you'll notice, and a lot of our thermomix recipes do this, you don't have to have a first prove with a thermomix. Um, okay, so we go straight into shaping, we force prove them and then we bake. And we seem to be able to get away with it amazingly enough. Um, lots of, so I have a baker friend of mine which says the bread can't possibly be as good if it hasn't had a first prove. But you know what? I can't find any fault with it whatsoever. Right, so handily, six minutes have gone. My spices have been toasted. 
So now I'm going to grind these spices up. It smells amazing. The, you know, the fragrance coming out of it is incredible. So it's going to make a bit of a noise, I'm afraid, for a minute because I'm going to be grinding at full pelt. Um, I don't know whether I'll be able to talk over it and start the next recipe, we'll see. But it does make a bit of a racket when it's going off at speed 10. Just let it do its thing. Can you hear me okay over it still? Is that all right? Yeah, okay, brilliant. All right, so let's go to... Why is that one is not... My other machine's having a temporary paddy. I'm going to go back to my five. And then I'm going to start uh, with the salmon dish. So I'm going to load my recipe onto the screen to work with, come back to my wheat, find my recipe. And this is going to be the pea and ginger soup, lemon salmon, with broccoli and potatoes. How amazing does that sound? And it's all gonna be cooked in the one machine. And I know Diane, you were, you were hoping to see me use the Baroma because you haven't had a play with that. Yep, Diane's on a machine. Okay, so I get an overview of the ingredients of what I need to do um, so to start with, so I can get everything ready. So that comes up on the screen. Right, actually. Now this is ground up. I'm going to show you what that looks like and come back to the curry. Oh, thought that was hops. <laughs> Let's find the spatula. So here's my fresh curry, freshly toasted and ground curry powder in the uh, bottom of that uh, thermomix bowl. Now, you know, it, you can make curry powders, of course you can. Um, just with a, a frying pan and then you can blend them up um, or grind them I suppose with a coffee grinder or something like that but this is I think the key thing with the Thermomix is that it does it all for you in one pot so you don't dirty lots of other equipment and um, you've got much less washing up at the end which is obviously what it's all about nobody likes to deal with a kitchen full of washing up after they've cooked um, and Thermomix just allows you to reduce everything all those utensils and the pots of pans that you cook with okay so now to that I'm going to add five garlic cloves sorry Diane I was going to do this the salmon but I've, now this is ready I think I'll just continue with that oh and do you know I forgot I didn't put in my cinnamon oops let's put in that cinnamon stick it won't have toasted it but I'll be able to grind it up. I might just break it in half, actually. Let's just do that. And I will, and I'm gonna grind it again. Whoopsie, need that cinnamon in there. Okay, let's grind. That's gonna make a real racket now I've put the, the cinnamon stick in. So I will go back to my salmon to start with. So I'm gonna make a marinade um, with the salmon. Oh, I just pressed something that I shouldn't have done. So it's going to talk me through making the marinade. So I want some olive oil, 30 grams of olive oil. So I'm going to pour that in, it's going to weigh it for me. Then 50 grams of soy sauce. A little bit of brown sugar. Oh, I didn't get my brown sugar out. A little bit of brown sugar now. You can, of course, not put the sugar in if you don't want to. One lemon finely grated zest half of. Hmm. Right, let's get my lemon grater. Huh? It's going to zest in half the lemon and then I bet it's going to ask me for the lemon juice which I didn't prepare but if Diane's cooking alongside me that'll give you time to catch up. So there's the lemon zest going in. 
click on next, and then 25 grams of lemon juice freshly squeezed. So I need a sharp knife. And do I have my little juicer here? Yes. So here's my, I love these little old fashioned wooden things, brilliant. So just put that in. I've got pips going in. I'm not going to worry too much about that because this is just a marinade. Let's get that lemon juice in. Okay. Click on next. So put the measuring cup and the lid on. So you'll notice again, right, I'm using the same bowl as I used to make the bread. Now oh, I seem to have lost my image. I don't know what's happened there. Uh, yeah, um, I'm using the same bowl as I used to make the bread. There's no point washing up. It's not going to do any harm. Um, so I'm just going to continue. I've reduced the washing up yet again because I don't need something separate to make bread as to then I can go and cook a completely different dish in. Obviously, if I was, uh, if I'd made a curry and then wanted to make a chocolate cake, I would wash up the bowl in between. Um, but there was really no need this morning. So now it's going to just emulsify those ingredients now for 20 seconds. It tells me on the front I'm emulsifying my mix in the oil, the soy sauce, the acidity from the lemon juice uh, together, and obviously the lemon zest. And that is the start of my marinade. I shouldn't have done that because so hanging out the top. Thought I'd just tidy up the little bits of zest that have uh, flung off. Okay, so now here's what's happened. So it's just mixed it all together, saves you having to do that. Again, of course you could do it in a little bowl if you didn't want to dirty your thermomix or start and you, you left your fish to marinade all day. Um, but if you're just going to continue to cook the whole dish at the same time, you may as well just start it off in the bowl. So now what I'm going to do is here's my piece of salmon. Now this may well take a little bit longer because these are not four individual fillets, this is half a side. Um, so I'm gonna just pour that marinade over. I've lined with, oh, I've lined with greaseproof paper or baking parchment. And then I am going to just pop the lid on, just a hand here, and put it to one side. Okay, so that, that's my Varoma. So this is the steaming attachment that is going to go on top. So just going to pop that off to the side for a moment. Whilst I continue with this recipe. So now it's asking for me to put a garlic clove in. So in goes a garlic clove. Now I'm going to make the basis of the curry sauce. Then um, a little bit of root ginger, five to 10 grams of root ginger peeled. Often I don't peel root ginger actually, um, just because I wash it thoroughly and I freeze it. And I once saw one of the in top, like the Michelin starred Indian chef saying, you actually didn't need to peel your ginger as long as you've washed it. So that goes in, just dropped in. 100 grams of shallots halved. I haven't got shallots, I'm just using, I love, um, I always use red onions because um, the uh, phytochemical content is higher, so it's nutritionally better for you. Uh, so I weigh in my onions. So again, I don't have to worry about, and I think a lot of um, customers to start with, get their weighing scales out and they weigh the ingredients before they put them in. You don't need to do any of that because you've got your inbuilt scales. So that's 100 grams gone in. Then 100 grams of leeks. So where are my leeks? Here they are. And I mean, these are just the, I'm basically making a soup. So these are the outer bits of these, um, of the leek as well. Okay, 100 grams of leek, 50 grams of olive oil. My oil in. Now I tend to reduce the oil content quite a lot, actually. Um, I'm just gonna put in a tablespoon about 15 grams. So just be aware that you can do that. I do think 50 grams, although I'm sure it makes an absolutely delightful result. It, I'm watching, I'm certainly watching my waistline after being in lockdown this year. So I am reducing the oil. Okay, and now it's gonna chop all of that up for me. So 
the guided recipe has come up for four seconds at speed four. So it's automatically determined the time and the speed functions that is needed to perform that step. Click on next and scrape down the sides with a spatula. Right, have I got, I'll just use this spatula, here we are. I'm gonna scrape down those sides. And my guess is it's gonna ask me to do that again. It might just cook it straight away. Is it gonna cook? I right, it's gonna cook. I'm just gonna go back a step and you can do this. So existing owners, just know that you can go back a step and repeat it. It wasn't quite chopped small enough because I put quite big lumps in. So I'm just gonna go back a step, repeat that. But I mean, you can chop up onions in five seconds in this thing. So a lot of the chefs I know with Thermomixes will put, will fill up their bowls with onions or garlic or ginger, whatever it is, and then just do a whole load of chopping all in one go and then freeze it all in portions and then pull out what they need. Um, because I mean, why would you chop an onion when a Thermomix can do it for you in five seconds? You just wouldn't, right? And so that's what's happened in five seconds. It's all got chopped up. Mmm, smells really good. Now it's going to cook for me. It's going to saute all those vegetables. So at this point, you know, if you're going to use the food processor, if you're going to sort of do it in a traditional way with a food processor, um, you then have to empty everything out of the food processor into a pan and stand at the, at, at, at the pan and stir it uh, for 10 minutes or so to make sure it doesn't burn. But no, you don't have to do any of that with a Thermomix. It is now just going to saute for me. So let me show you my dials on here. I'll just go back a step. And it says it's cooking for seven minutes. It's all temperature controlled at 120. So I don't need to worry about that temperature. Speed one, gentle stir. Um, and every, a lot of people comment actually when they have soups and, and, and curries made in a Thermomix, how much different they taste to when they've made soups themselves. Now, most people can make a soup, it's not that hard. Um, but actually, oh, yeah, my thing is dropping down. What I find is that the hardest bit of soup making, and even when, just need to tighten my tripod because it's having a moment. Um, even when you make soup, and, and it's the same for me on a hob, you've still got to saute out those on, the onions and the garlic and the base, the vegetables that make the base of your soup. Um, and I find, you know, if you're not really on it, you will either brown those onions, in which case you'll impart bitter flavours, or those onions won't be quite cooked through evenly. So you'll have that kind of overriding raw onion sort of flavour, really pungent onion flavour. You don't get any of that with the Thermomix. And people are often surprised at demos where they can taste the food, how good the soups taste and how much different to anything that they've made themselves, even those people with a soup maker um, that, uh, you know, they may have had before. Um, right, so I'm gonna come back to my curry because now I have obviously followed the instructions and done what it told me to do and put the cinnamon in. Never mind, now I've got curry powder all over the front of my machine. There we are. So the, the cinnamon has been chewed down. I don't know many pieces of kit that can chew through a cinnamon in a minute, cinnamon stick in a minute. Right, five garlic cloves. I am gonna put the garlic in now. Now, I don't quite have enough in there. So what I wanted to show you yesterday, I did a demo actually for a manufacturer, a food manufacturer, and I made some garlic paste. Now, where did I put that? Oh, I haven't got it, I don't think I've, I might, it might, ah, here it is. My husband's been in the fridge this morning and moved everything around. So I just blitzed up a whole load of garlic with some olive oil and salt yesterday. Um, to show this food manufacturer how quick it is to make your own garlic paste, stop them buying it in. So I'm just going to use, because I didn't quite have five garlic cloves there, I'm just going to use a bit of that garlic paste. You can do the same with ginger paste. And then this, this is what the manufacturer really wanted to see. This is vegetable stock paste. Look at that, a kilo of stock. Now, all I did with this is I save up my leftover vegetables. I've got a fellow colleague that does it with peelings, would you believe? Um, 
and you can freeze them if you don't quite, you know, you're not going to be making this very regularly because this is going to last you six months. So I've, I've got customers and colleagues that will freeze peelings and scraps. You know, when you cut the top and tail off a carrot, you'd usually chuck it, you can keep it. Then you can put all of it in a Thermomix with a load of salt and some wine. It'll chop it all down and puree it for you. And then it will cook it out to give you that, which is just incredible. So this is pure, proper, pure vegetable stock with no nasties, no additives, and things like gluten. I mean, what on earth is gluten doing in vegetable stock? And that's why a lot of people on sort of gluten-free, dairy-free diets actually buy thermomixes or restricted diets because they can control everything and make everything from first principles that goes into their food. And I've got a lady actually that has contacted me to buy it next week because she's just been put on a low FODMAP diet and she can't have various items. She said she's got to do everything from scratch and she's living on jacket potatoes because she doesn't know how to cook. And this is just the answer to her dreams really. Um, so the garlic cloves have gone in. Now, another piece of root ginger. So have I just used up all that ginger? Oh, here we go. I put my ginger in. So this is just making the base for a curry sauce. Right, insert the lid. Here's my lid behind, and I'm gonna just knock off a bit of that spice because my lid was not um, dry to start with when I did this. So just put the spices down into the bowl. Better in the food than on top of it, really. There we are. Okay, and now that is going to grind all of the garlic and the ginger into a paste. So three tens come on again, but just for 10 seconds. So six seconds, actually, I think it was. And I will show you my screen. I have promised you I'm gonna show you my screen in a minute. Scrape down the sides. Oh, that looks amazing. <laughs> so let me just show you that. So that is the garlic and the ginger all together with the spices. And now I'm gonna add in some onion. 285 grams of onion. So in that goes, have I got enough? Let's pop that bit in. And oh, I've got a bit of red onion over there. So you can see, so now if I can bring you down to show you my nice large screen here, you'll see that I've just, I've just slightly undershot the onion. So I'm gonna put a little bit more in. So here's what it's telling me is in my uh, bowl. I want 285 grams. I'm just going to drop a little bit more onion in. I've gone over. That doesn't matter. It's a curry after all. So I'm just going to click on next. And now it's telling me to add in the vegetable oil. Right, I'm going to use... I'm just going to use some olive oil on this, actually, because I don't have vegetable oil to hand. So again, I'm not going to quite put in the 70... I'll probably halve it around about like that. So my olive oil has just gone straight in. I've weighed it in, click on next. Now it's telling me to put the lid on. Can you see that? And then it's gonna chop it all up for me at speed uh, four for three seconds. So that onion's gonna be chopped in three seconds. Just gonna have a quick peek inside. Click on next. And now it's going to cook for me for eight minutes at 120 speed one. Okay, so again, same as what's happening over here. This is sauteing all these vegetables for me. Look, we've only got eight seconds left to go at 120 degrees. Here I'm cooking that on those onions and that bait, the garlic, ginger and the spice paste out for eight minutes. So I don't have to do it. I don't have to worry. I can go and sit down with a glass of wine. I can go and talk to my children or help them with homework or listen to music practice. Whatever it is that means that you don't have to be tied to a, an oven or a hob with a wooden spoon and a saucepan stirring away. So let's move back to my five where I'm doing the salmon dish. So click on next. Now it wants me to put in, so you can see, you can see the steam coming out. There we go. Got it all sauteed for us. Nothing's burnt, all perfect. Now it's asking me to put in 100 grams of celery stalks. So they go straight in, like that. Cut in pieces, 350 grams 
of peas. So this is going to be the basis of our soup. So they're going to go in. And somebody told me, I've not done this one before. You'd think before I do these demos, I would actually practice the recipes. But that is how confident I am in these machines and the quality of the food that comes out that I actually feel like I don't need to practice them. And I really like to do different things so people can see, people that watch these demos uh, a number of times can actually see a big variety of dishes being made. And that is, you know, that's what you get when you buy thermomix. You also get an advisor um, to hold your hand and help you step by step along the way. Um, and I always say at this point, you know, not all advisors are equal. We uh, are all self-employed and independent and treat our businesses very differently. But this is my full time business. Um, it's what I live and breathe a little bit too much. I am always talking about Thermomix. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite things. So all my customers get the benefit of that enthusiasm and the passion and my experience and how to get the most out of their machines. Okay. So now it wants me to put the lid on. And it's going to chop for eight seconds. So it's going to chop all the celery up for eight seconds. I don't add the peas. I don't know why the celery didn't go into saute with the onion, but I'm following the recipe. And I tend to learn something new every time I cook. And now scrape down the sides. So if you know, it's so it's like cooking by numbers. Actually, if you don't know what you're doing, it walks you through it step by step. As I've said, you can get children um, to use this machine because it's fun. It's a touch screen, and it tells them what to do, and it just makes it safe and easy um, for them. And my 14-year-old um, boy. He's been making a curry, not this particular one. He does a butter chicken. It's his absolute, um, it, it's his signature dish. He's been doing that since he was 11 uh, without any help from me. I just get the ingredients out and he follows the recipes. And he's often to be seen just sitting on his phone. And I'm saying, I say to him, Jamie, what are you doing? You're supposed to be cooking. And he says, I am cooking, mum. And he sat there on his phone while the Thermomix is cooking for him. And, th and that really just sums up what Thermomix is all about. So that's what it's done in eight seconds or so to all the peas, shredded them. Now I'm going to add in some water. Now with Diane, I can't see Diane actually. Is she Are you cooking, Diane? <laughs> Did you have all the ingredients? So I actually, I think I only just told you what I was cooking this morning. <laughs> so let's put in some water. 450 grams goes in. Like that. I tend to run out of space when I do all of this. I wouldn't normally cook two main meals at a time. A little bit of salt. There's my salt on it, blasting over here. Teaspoon of salt. That goes in. And now it's asking me to insert the simmering basket. So this is my simmering basket. It's going in. And I put it in with the hole, Diane, because you haven't had a welcome visit from me yet. You perhaps won't be aware of this, but if you are watching and not cooking yourself, um, our simmering basket's got a hole um, which you need to line up with a handle. And the reason for this is that our spatula, can you see it's got that little lug on it? You can um, just attach the spatula to the simmering basket so that when it's hot, you can easily pull it out. And then there's a little recess on the handle of the Thermomix and you can actually rest this kind of circular disc onto the recess so that it drains. Can you see the simmering basket draining into um, the bowl itself? So we'll see that anyway at the end of the cooking time. Right, so the simmering basket's gone in. Then it's asking me to weigh in some potatoes. Hmm, where are my potatoes? Here they are. I've already cut them up, you'll be pleased to know. I think I might have cut them a little bit too small, but we'll see. I'm going to pop the potatoes in, cut in pieces. Then it wants me to put the Varoma dish into position. <laughs> they always like to be on camera. They think they're on YouTube, that's the thing. Right, where did I put my Varoma? So to put the Varoma dish into position, I need to get my lid on. 
And then I'm not putting the measuring cup in the middle because I want the steam to escape. And so that the residual heat from the steam is going to cook this fish. So let me just pop that there. And then what I am going to do, because I was a little bit hasty and popped it all in before I put my vegetables in. Just can you see I've used the little lid as a tray. I'm going to just put, pop that down behind because now I'm going to put the rest of the vegetables in and it will tell me to do this. Weigh in some broccoli florets. I'm going to put the broccoli florets in here like that and I'm going to also add in some courgette pieces chopped up and some onion because I've got those to use up right I did I had them in the fridge left over so I just thought not onion carrot and I've actually got another bit of carrot that I wanted to shove in there I may as well whilst I'm cooking it if it's uh, obvious but the fridge my fridge is a bit like the TARDIS so oh here it is excellent I've always got I don't I don't throw anything away I've always got it drives my husband mad um I've always got random vegetables and things stuffed in my fridge so in go those carrots then what I'm going to do is pop the salmon on the top with its marinade it's going to sit in the marinade I didn't make my grease proof Light, yeah, just it's slightly too small. Never mind. Pop the lid on, click on next. Oh, season the broccoli with some salt. Okay, well, I haven't done that, I'm not going to bother now. Insert the Varoma tray, arrange the salmon on it. We've already done that with the marinade, and then it's going to cook for 20 minutes. Okay, so let's just show you that on here. So there's my screen. So if I just stop that and go back a step, it's told me to what to do. So I just need to read and do what it says, cover with the lid. And then the cooking time is preset for 20 minutes at steaming temperature at speed one. Okay, so at that point, again, I can just walk away and handily my curry is now it's now cooked well that I'm ready to move on to the next phase click on next right now it's asking me to add in some tomatoes we've got some lovely fresh tomatoes here I always buy my fresh tomatoes in Lidl um the big ones on the vine they're great value and they, they actually smell like tomatoes um which often you find in this country tomatoes don't so I reset my scales to zero Add in my just halved tomatoes. I should have just about the right amount on here. There we are, just gone a little bit over. Maybe I will take one out. So, but there we are. So, I mean, you don't need to be too precise. They are there as a guide. Uh, put the lid on. But if you like, you know, if you like a really garlicky curry, then by all means, add more garlic to it. Now, so now all the spices and the onions have cooked out. I've added my uh, tomato pieces to it. Now I'm gonna blend it to make the basis of the curry sauce. So this has all been done for me really while I've been having a chat with you um, and doing another dish entirely. I'm just gonna come back onto this machine and see if I can get it to I've got my broccoli salad on there. It should be in one of my, if I go into my recipes, creative collection. Uh, uh, uh. Just want to try and use the other machine to make this little super fast broccoli salad. Um, but I don't know if it's gonna like it. If it's not, um, well, it's connected. It's obviously connected to Cookie Do because it's allowing me to scroll through my. Sorry, I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm terrible for that. I think people must, must think I'm bonkers when I'm out walking the dog because <laughs> I talk to the dog as well. Uh, I just want to find my uh, broccoli um, salad. I bet it's right down at the bottom on my folder. 
So it would have been one of the first ones that I loaded on a tray. Has anybody, while I'm trying to find this, has anybody got any questions for me so far? Are you all enjoying what you're seeing? And, uh, you know, think that it's a, it could be a definite uh, addition to your kitchen. Are you enjoying um, what you're seeing so far, Pam? You, sorry to pick on you <laughs> as the organizer of the demo. Oh, actually, I think it's Pam on the phone. <laughs> All right, let me go down. I'm going to try and do this slightly different way and see if I can. Uh, so saved collections. That would probably actually be. I don't know where it might be. My basic cookbook. I'm sure it is in here under traffic light salad. Aha, broccoli salad with red peppers and pine nuts. Excellent. I knew I'd get there eventually. Okay, right. Recipe is now loading on the screen. I'm gonna, just going to show you that is my curry sauce. Doesn't that look amazing? My curry gravy. So all fresh ingredients. Um, a big difference from buying one that has been ready made. You know exactly what's in it. Um, it's going to taste amazing. It's just made from scratch with fresh ingredients. And okay, it's taken me 20 minutes or so, but actually for 18 of those minutes, I'm not really doing anything. So Pam, I think I'll just show you again. That is the, the base of the curry sauce. That looks amazing, doesn't it? All right, now it actually this recipe asks for chicken thighs, but I don't have chicken thighs. So I'm gonna just put in my um, chicken breast pieces. I've, I've cut them up quite large actually, um, because it's just gonna cook away for 20 minutes. Like that. So pop all those in. You can fit, I, you can quite comfortably cook up to about a kilo of chicken, sometimes even more than that. I mean, I'll show you, in fact, you could probably double this recipe. So this would serve does it say how many it serves? So at the front, you always get, let me show you this as well while I'm not on it, this recipe detail. So if you scroll, you, you click down on the arrow, it tells you what the ingredients are and what your the steps that you're about to do. Um, and then it will give you hints and tips uh, at the end. So it's, it's telling you if you don't want to use chicken, you can actually replace it with potatoes. You could obviously replace it with um, chickpeas or something like that or some beans or some lentils um, but it's telling me oh so this would serve six anyway so look I've only got I mean it's not even it's just over half full I suppose my bowl so you could double this actually and quite comfortably cook for a small army of 12 people um, if we're ever allowed to have dinner parties again so that's going to cook away beautifully in that sauce and I mean this is the thing, a lot of people like to make curries from scratch and, and a lot of people's husbands will do it. But actually, the, everybody says the mess involved when they've made one is, is quite incredible with all the different pots and pans and you know the utensils that you need and then the grinders and the food processors. And actually, we've done it all step by step in here. So all I've got to wash up at the end with a spatula and my bowl. Oh, and by the way, the Thermomix washes itself up. Amazing. So let's press continue. Now, it's a bit, little bit too uh, quick to jump the gun. It wants some tomato paste. Let's grab a spoon, add my tomato paste in. Just reset my scales to zero. Tomato paste goes in. And now I can put that lid on. Okay. So it's gonna cook for 18 minutes. Just show you that, and it's just going to. Ooh, what am I doing now? Let's come off. Am I back? Am I back? 18 minutes, 100 degrees, speed a half. So it's just gently stirring, and the um, blades have gone into reverse. So um, we have the option of putting our blades uh, into reverse, and that just means um, that it's using the blunt side of the blade. Um, so it's not going to to shred or chop or grind or mince up your meat. 
um, because it's using the blunt side as opposed to the sharp side. So if you're on a, a guided recipe, that function or that feature automatically comes on. But obviously, if you are freestyling and doing your own recipes, then you just need to be aware that for certain processes, it might be beneficial to put your blades into reverse. Um, our blades, when they're going at speed 10, guess what speed they do? It's unbelievable. Um, it's about 250 kilometers an hour they go at when they uh, are, are fully on speed 10. So you certainly don't want um, to have the blunt side going when you're um, chop it, using it to chop things up. Okay, right, so that's going. Uh, my salmon is steaming away. I probably will need to increase the cooking time slightly longer than 20 minutes um, with the salmon because, of course, it's in one piece rather than individual fillets, so it's a little bit denser. But we'll have a look at that in 10 minutes' time. It, 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 normally, I would expect it to be sort of 20 to 25 minutes. And now, the last thing I want to cook, I'm just going to wash my hands, just going to do a little salad. In the meantime, I'm going to have a check of my rolls. I've been cooking for about an hour. I've done two main meals, I've done some bread, and I'm gonna do a very quick salad as well. So yeah, the rolls, can you see? They're, they're rising, they're just touching, they're still quite small. So I'm just gonna leave them because I prefer them to be really big and puffy. So I'm just gonna leave them in that warm oven there now. Um, and I'm going to do my broccoli salad. Now this makes quite a big quantity actually. So. I'm just going to reduce the quantity, as lovely as it is, um, it's better made and eaten fresh. Lots of people will do this um, and take it to work with them for lunch because it's so quick and it's really tasty. And also lots of people don't realize that um, you can have broccoli raw in salads and how delicious it is. So here's my recipe loaded on the screen. It's asking me for 300 grams of broccoli florets. Well, I'm just going to put in about 100. Then one red pepper cut into pieces. That's just, here's my red pepper though. I'm sort of halving this recipe. Just tear that in. And an apple cut into pieces. So here's my apple pieces. They've gone slightly brown. I've just um, cored it. I have actually peeled it as well because I had a squirrel outside nibbling on my apple. So I thought I'd better peel it. Uh, but normally I wouldn't have bothered. Then I'm going to put the dressing ingredients in. Well, I'm actually going to put some pine nuts in first. So a few little pine nuts go in. Diane, have you tried this one? This is delicious, this salad. And now onto the dressing ingredients. So some olive oil. I have, it in. I have the ingredients in, so I might make it later. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. So some olive oil. Bit of cider vinegar. Oh, this is a new bottle. Going to open it. Lindsay, what's the recipe called so I can save it? It's broccoli salad with red pepper and pine nuts. Thanks. Teaspoon of honey and a little bit of mustard. So very traditional dressing ingredients, but I bet you've never seen a salad prepared like this before and how quick it is to do. And this is always the one I used to do if I was going to networking group meetings um, and I had my sort of minute presentation, I'd often just throw in all the ingredients and do this in about a minute. And people were amazed by it and, and, and amazed more so when they tasted it by how much flavor and how fresh it was. So a little bit of mustard, oh, some sea salt. I may as well use my Himalayan one. Here we are, my pink Himalayan salt. That goes in, some pepper, have I got my pepper grinder in hand? Lid on. And then it's seven seconds at speed four. And it's gonna chop all that up for me. So we'll have a little look. See what it looks like. If you want slightly smaller pieces, then just run it for a few more seconds. Well, I will um, get onto that chat in a minute. Ah, oh, no, I don't think I need any smaller pieces at all. And then it says serve at room temperature. So there is my salad. Absolutely, it's so delicious. 
In fact, even the children will eat this, so that's a winner. Um, and uh, yeah, really tasty, quick salad. You can do this with, um, there's a, a beetroot and carrot and apple one, as well with raw beetroot. Um, I mean, you can freestyle, you can do it with any sort of root vegetable. You could put in um, some celeriac if you wanted to. Um, you, you know, you it, just find what is it, what, what's in the bottom of your fridge drawer and chuck it in and use it. Um, it's really, really good. So that's a salad. The bread I'm just gonna leave to rise. These are all still cooking away. I've got my salmon's going. I can see it starting to change color, which is brilliant. Um, and the curry is cooking for another 10 minutes. So while that is all going on, I'm gonna preheat my oven to cook those rolls, that's for sure. And then I'm just gonna have a little look at the chat because I've uh, missed it. So let's have a little bit uh, of a look. So ha has anybody got any questions for me? I made these at your house, Lindsay. So yes, the um, girls made these rolls. Uh, Roma is fab. I love the meatballs in it and the sauce cooked underneath. Brilliant. And the whole chicken. Yes, you can do a whole chicken. Um, and the chicken will cook in this Roma unit in um, 55 minutes. And then you get all the stock underneath as well to use. And you can also um, put your vegetables underneath the chicken. I've done smoked fish, made yogurt. How did your yogurt turn out, Diane? Uh, Sorry, Lindsay, I thought I was on mute there and I'm shouting at the kids. That's all right. How, how did your yoghurt um, turn out? You know, it turned out great. It turned out really well and I put it in really big jam jars because I didn't have um, tiny jars, but it seemed yep, to work. Yep, good idea. Fantastic. It's tasty. It's tasty. We like it. Yeah. Pam mm. said it would save me so much time. Yeah, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's all about just making life much easier and more simple for you and cooking from fresh I made the stock delighted to hear it would last six months it made a massive jar yeah I mean if you think you're just going to use a teaspoon at a time Diane with the stock so if you've got a kilo and you're using a teaspoon that's about 200 servings so that's a huge amount of stock um love the sourdough masterclass oh thanks Gail having a go myself giving me confidence and skills it's been a godsend having you on the other end of messenger but and they're not dark questions at all Diane um everybody always asks the same questions me too to begin with um and you know already those questions have got less haven't they so um it just shows you as you use this machine and get to know it um you, you know, you get comfortable with it and you don't need to ask those questions anymore. But I still have, I mean, I've still got owners for two years on asking me questions. <laughs> but, you, you know, generally about other things like sourdough, because they're cooking, like with Gail, has moved on a step. Um, okay. You find in the beginning that you need a lot more ingredients to stock up on all these beautiful menus. I didn't, so Gail said I didn't. I think it depends really on what your kitchen store cupboard looks like. Um, I do think there are a few key things, spices that you, you need. And, um, you know, I'm happy to sort of share a list um, from what I think would be beneficial for you to have. And in fact, one of my advisors, I saw something on a forum, somebody put a list together, um, actually it's like common spices. Basic cook. Um, yeah. So not really used to doing a lot of sauces and things. I'm quite mm -hmm. a plain eater, um, but the kids obviously like more. So I'd love, yeah, that would be great if there was a list of yeah. stock items. Yeah, so a, a store cupboard have. ingredient type yes. list. So things that like, you know, fantastic. I often have, I use apple cider vinegar a lot in salad dressing. You could use white wine vinegar. Um, but yeah, you know, your oils um, and then like which spices are the most commonly used in curries and things like, yeah, yeah, happy, absolutely happy to do that. Um, let's have a, so I've got three minutes to go on the salmon. Yeah, I think that's going to cook through in 20 minutes. I'm really pleased it didn't um, do it the other day. I had to increase the cooking time slightly, but I think it depends on what's cooking underneath it as well and whether it's taking a lot of energy out. So really... So the last thing um, left is just to tell you a little bit about how much it costs, although I think most of you are aware anyway, because we, we've had some of those discussions, um, and how you buy it. So um, a Thermomix costs eleven four nine, um, And at this point, I wait for everybody to sort of fall off their chairs if they haven't been pre-warned. I can tell you, though, now it is worth 
every single penny. Like I said at the beginning of this demo, it was the single factor that put me off buying this machine for so many years. And I really wish in hindsight now it hadn't done. Um, because if you are using it to its full potential, you will offset that cost. So, and even people that cook from scratch, fine, they still make savings. So a customer of mine said, she couldn't believe it. She set, still saves about 10 pounds a week off her food shopping. And that's because she's now doing other things with it, like making butter, like making yogurt. I mean, you can make a kilo and a half. Hello, darling. You back in? Do you want to come and say hello? Okay. No, she wants Chris. No, she wants to be on the camera, actually. I don't know where she's coming from, but she loves to wave hello to everybody. Oh, and I've got another one here behind me. Well, I'm cooking a curry. So what do you, you know, what do you expect? It stinks. I prefer to say, I prefer, prefer to say it smells lovely, Alexa. <laughs> right. I clearly have to bribe you next time. Um, yeah, so where were we? So I've got, this is the other one that I want to say hello. Um, so if you make things like yogurt, you can make a kilo and a half of yogurt for about 80p. It's not, I mean, you couldn't buy it for that. Um, so if you're using it to its full potential, you're making, I make my own tomato ketchup with it. I make my stock paste with it. You can make Nutella with it and then Nutella will be far more free. Even if you just swap out, you know, one meal once a week, for example, lots of people say they can't afford these machines and then they'll go and buy a takeaway on a Friday or Saturday night. Well, yeah, if you can afford a takeaway, you can certainly afford a Thermomix because you're spending 50 or so pounds on this. Oh yes, you can also make your own dairy-free milk. Um, good, good point, Gail. Um, if you're you know, spending 40, 50 pounds on a takeaway, this, you can buy this machine from 36 pounds a month on one of our payment plans, like one pound 20 a day or nine pounds a week. It's kind of a no brainer. And then you just divert the money that you would have spent on a takeaway into buying cheaper, fresh ingredients at the supermarket uh, instead and cooking it from scratch easily and effortlessly with a Thermomix. And that is, you know, our entire philosophy. So you can either buy these uh, on a card outright in one payment, or you can use one of our payment plans, which are done through Icarno. So Icarno is owned by Ikea. It's a big reputable provider of store finance. We offer plans over one, two and three years with an APR of 9.9%. So on a one year plan, it's about 96 pounds a month. On a two year, it's 56. And on a three year is 36. Now I would really strongly encourage you, if you're going to buy one of these machines, do not go onto our website and buy it directly on the website. Because for, for two reasons really. Firstly, I won't get paid. Um, and I only earn money through introducing the machines to, to customers and I do a lot of work to support them. So obviously I need to earn money through it. Um, otherwise there's no point in me doing it. And secondly, you won't get any of that support. You will get delivered, a th and that's the most important point for you really. Um, you will get delivered a Thermomix to your front door and you'll be on your own um, and you won't know how to use it correctly. Um, so, you know, it is really important that you can come back to the advisor that's introduced you to the machine and audit your machine through that advisor so that we can support you every step of the way. And I'm picking up now on lots of different internet forums that people, because they don't realise how our business is set up and the fact that they do have access to these advisors will just go onto the website and buy direct and then they don't know how to use their machine. So every day there's messages saying, I, I'm not using my machine, it's sat on the side, I don't know how to use it. And people say, well, talk to your advisor. Oh, I don't have an advisor, I just bought online. Um, so, you know, I can't encourage you strongly enough not to go down that road, route. Um, so let's just have a little, a, look, a little look at what Gail said, because I can see the chat going. Uh, my shopping bill has been cut by a third at least and much less plastic. Yeah, so that's a really good point actually, Diane. And that's one thing that I do normally bring up so people buy these machines for different reasons. For some, it will be the time saving. For some, it will be the cost saving. And for some, it will be down to the fact that, yes, they want to do that their bit for the environment and they want to save the waste. So you can absolutely do that. Think of all the things. So even that stock paste that I make is now in a kiln jar. I'm not consuming all those little um, plastic stock pots anymore um, or foil wrapped stock cubes. I, I can just do away with all of those. Um, and it makes you, girl says it makes you cook things you wouldn't have done 
otherwise you know what we say in Tropic just do it lol we understand same with Tropic needs an ambassador yeah I wasn't aware actually with Tropic that you could buy I thought you had to buy through an, uh, an ambassador but I don't think that's the case is it you can just go online and buy um, I'm already planning my new kitchen <laughs> in my head and where it's going to go <laughs> oh I did yeah you can go online oh yeah that is a shame um, so right now my salmon is cooked so let's just show you that because I would like to at least finish one of the main dishes whilst you're there we're just coming up for half past I thought it was only going to be 60 minutes but there we go uh, okay so my salmon's cooked now what I'm going to do is just remove that onto the tray so you can have a little look now this is where it kind of gets oh you want a drink? So there's my salmon, look, beautifully steamed through and it's absolutely succulent and juicy. And of course, they've got that marinade underneath, which I'll be able to use as a sauce. So I'm just gonna pop that down. And then obviously I've got the broccoli and the carrots and the courgettes underneath it. Then I'm gonna take my, I'm gonna use the, this to take my simmering basket out. Let's get a, saucer underneath it here we go just pop that off to the side it's a little bit too hot to open for the time being okay so it's, uh, it's told me to set the varoma aside on a plate to keep warm then remove the simmering basket with the aid of the spatula set aside on a plate and cover with a tea towel to keep warm Ah, now I need to add some cream to taste. So you can add any type of cream that you want to to this. Um, if you haven't got cream, you can add something else. You could do, you could add creme fraiche or oat milk or oat creme fraiche rather. I'm just gonna get my cream from the other fridge. You may not see me, but you can still hear me. <laughs> right, so I've got some cream. So again, I mean, you could miss out this. If you wanted to be a little bit more healthy and not have the cream, you don't have to put the cream in. Or you could use a cream substitute as well. But I'm gonna go and put the cream in, even though I probably shouldn't. Uh, click on next. Now I wanna find my insert. So I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to blend. So this is going to take two minutes to blend. So we're going to start at speed five and then we're gradually going to increase that speed to speed 10 once it's got going. Okay, right. So my curry is looking lovely. Now it's asking me for some peanut butter, the smooth peanut butter in the curry. Right, well, I'm not going to put that peanut butter in. Um, I'm just going to add in some ground almonds just to thicken the sauce. Although I probably don't even need to add, add this in actually. I'm just going to put a little bit, 30 grams of ground almonds. And then it's asking me to put the lid back on. And it's going to cook it again and stir it all for me. So now I'm going to ramp my soup up to speed 10 to puree it. You can make your own peanut butter. You absolutely can. And you can make your own almond butter cashew butter Let's see if I can just eat. So I'm, just pull, I'm just pulling down my potatoes so that I can lift them there. There you are. You can see there's my steamed potatoes in there that's steamed underneath the salmon. Oh, 
And then there's, here's my, here's the broccoli and the courgette and the carrot, okay, that has steamed again underneath that salmon. So if I just show you um, what it's all gonna look like, I can put it on a plate as well. Um, okay, so my soup is cooked. So it's telling me to serve that soup for a starter. So here's the soup, it's just been cooked and pureed. So you could have that as a starter. And then the salmon fillets, potatoes and broccoli for the main course. So if I just plate up, um, let's just take you over here. Again, I have to disconnect my light off of my tripod actually for this. So, oops. Now, I wonder if I can just pop you there so you can see. Yeah, that's good. I think that's okay. All right. Um, before I plate, I'm just going to get my rolls out so that you can see. So they're looking nice now. Can you see? They've risen beautifully. I haven't had to do anything with them. They're just about ready to cook. Um, right, Sharon. And they're just going to go into the other side into a hot oven now for 15 minutes. Oh, so Sharon, hang on. Let me just see what you've just said. Um, yes, I'm sorry. I've gone on, gone on a bit. I really need to go, but I want to go ahead and buy one, Lindsay. Thanks very much. for them. Oh, that's lovely, Sharon. Okay, well, we'll be in touch afterwards. I think, are we connected through my group? Are you still on, actually, Sharon? You are still there. Um, oh, no, I, I am still here, yeah. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Um, so do you know how to get hold of me? We can connect through Facebook. I think, yeah, I've just, uh, some, someone's invited me to your group, so I'm in it now. Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. All Thanks right, very much. Well, that's great news. Lovely Thank to you. see you and talk okay. to you soon. Bye-bye. See you soon. Okay, thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. So let's just place up now. I'll show you a nice little bit of salmon off. And it's so succulent. I, lo I absolutely love steaming salmon. Look at that. Let me just bring that up. Show you what that looks like. Doesn't that look delicious? Um, okay. And then a few potatoes. Can go on. A few steamed potatoes. that and then I don't have time to be terribly chefy about it let's put my carrots in and a couple of courgette pieces like that hello Jamie <laughs> my eldest son he's 14 nearly 14 has just um arrived in the kitchen it's uncanny his timing he knows I'm coming towards the end of the demo and he likes to see, you know, what food has been created that he can come and eat. I haven't made lemonade. I'm really sorry, Jamie, but you can make some lemonade this afternoon because I do have those ingredients. So there we are. Actually, I think that will do, won't it? And then a little bit of the sauce over the top of the salmon. So let's just spoon a couple of teaspoons of the sauce. You can have it for lunch. Yeah, absolutely. So that is the salmon and steamed potatoes, uh, steamed vegetables, or as they would say in France, pomme vapeur or leg legume vapeur. That sounds much posher, doesn't it? Um, which is a fantastic all-in-one recipe, really sort of showing off what the Thermomix is all about in terms of that multi-level approach to cooking um, and minimising the mess. Because of course, all I've got to really clear up uh, now is the Thermomix itself and it will just wash itself up. Okay. Let's go back and I'll also have a look at the curry um, because the curry's finished. Two, there it is. Transfer to a bowl and keep warm. So let me just show you that curry. And um, if I've got a spoon, I will get a little stir around. Yeah, so here's my curry. You know, we're still with my big, lovely lumps of chicken in there. And there, there it is. You can just about see that. Okay, nice big chicken lumps. Because yeah. a lot of people get worried with the Thermomix that it's going to shred their meat up. Um, and what I find is as long as you cut the meat into big enough chunks when you put it in, um, you really generally don't have a problem 
Um, but I think we, you know, just have a tendency to cut them, them slightly too small. Of course, this recipe was designed for chicken thigh fillets um, and thighs are a lot denser, so they don't tend to break up. If you're using the breast, you've just got to remember um, to cut them into slightly bigger pieces. So there we go, I've done a chicken curry from scratch. Um, oh, this beautiful soup. Let's get this soup out and run into a little bowl. I'll pop it into a, a pea. I don't know what it is, a pea and ginger soup, I think they described it as, with obviously leeks. Uh, and, um, oh, you can see it coming out there, with leeks and celery. So that can go on the plate as well, alongside the salmon, if you want to. Um, and then, you, you know, you could just serve that whole place of food um, to your guests or, you know, as a family meal, um, which is brilliant. And then the bowls and everything click apart after you've pre-cleaned them using the pre-clean function, the bowls will click apart, put everything straight in the dishwasher. Happy days. <laughs> okay. So I think, right, Gail says she's got to go and have a shower. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, has anybody got any further questions? I'll stop recording now, actually. I may as well end the recording.